Our talk is, is entitled Design is Smart, and so we're going to really kind of hopefully communicate to you some of the things we've learned as UXers working with machine learning and AI uh, over about the past three years. This is really important and can be one of the most daunting parts because if you as a UXer don't understand actually how some of this really works, you're never going to get in there into the deep conversations uh, with engineering and product teams. When we think about AI, uh, often it is these large mechanistic systems, you know, assembly line of many robots doing many things seemingly magically. Artificial intelligence is really anything where there is an automated decision being made. Uh, and what's distinct about machine learning as a, as a subset of AI is that these are decisions are learned. And really when we talk about decisions, it's one more layer we have to unpack. It's predictions. So like the one thing to be cognizant of, really, of, of anything in the process of machine learning is to ask what prediction is being made here. If you've ever taught anyone anything ever, you already know how to do machine learning. So supervised learning with my son looks like pointing to a strawberry and saying strawberry. Then pointing to another strawberry and saying strawberry. It's machine learning in child format. But to train a model, you need to do that like 100,000 times. One way that's really useful is we just ask people, describe the way a theoretical human expert might perform this task today. The feedback to these models as well is basically how they get better. So if they don't have good data, it's really going to slow them down to actually give you better predictions in the future. There's sometimes this fantasy of like, oh, well, if we apply AI to this system, it will actually remove a bunch of the problems with human judgment or human errors or things like that. The problem with that, though, is algorithms are trained on data that's collected by and about humans. They have in them our preferences, our opinions, and our biases are embedded into this data. Like, we choose where all of the data come from. We get to choose what good looks like. And we determine those success criteria and what truth is. You know, when raiders go through and label stuff, they're doing so based on protocols that have been designed by a person with success criteria and evaluations that have been deemed correct by people using data that has been sourced by people and originally captured by people. And then we get affected. And it's not a pipeline. It's a feedback loop. A lot of times there's kind of this notion of like, we'll just apply machine learning to it or apply AI to it. None of that replaces all of the user research you need to do. None of that replaces ethnography or interviewing people or like, God forbid, talking to some people face to face. We do this, this little process. I find many people do this process of saying, OK, well, I'm this complex entity, but then there's everybody else, and they can fit into some sort of a neat bucket. And that's, that's not true. By calling to attention these characteristics and these differences and recognizing that everyone is that complex, my hope is that as a UX community, we can help everyone understand that the world is a lot more like this, much more multifaceted and, and interrelated, where we have similarities and we have differences. And being a, a human-centered practitioner doesn't mean hiding from these differences or trying to believe that inclusion or inclusive design is about believing everyone's the same and homogeneity is the goal. It's actually highlighting and celebrating our differences, calling them out as things to be respected and cherished. Mm -hmm.